Miss Marvelous, Marvelous. It's very nice. That's right, friends. It's your main man Z here. And I finally made it through Miss Marvel. Six episodes. That's right. I am the man who has been tortured by watching every single episode of every Marvel thing ever just to give you these great reviews. Oh boy. Let's get into it as I will review the season finale and all of Miss Marvel. It give you an idea of what I think. And uh, let's start by taking a look at some questions that I had. Since perhaps people know things better than I do, I wanted to see what was the, what were the top Google searches for Miss Marvel. And I just think these are funny because they are. Uh, anyway, they wanted to know, number one Google search, is Miss Marvel a good show? Let's find out the answer together, folks. It has a 97% positive rating, ratings on the Rotten Tomatoes, leaping over Mar Marvel's Agents of Shields as the top-reviewed Marvel television product. That is right. <laughs> has Miss Marvel been canceled? Apparently, we don't know yet. Although, we did already review a video... I did it about the ratings. Not so hot. Not so nice. Is Miss Marvel a hero or a villain? I believe she aspires to be a hero. So let's <laughs> let's get to it. Let's get to the actual season here. Let's talk about the actual show and what went on. So Miss Marvel is the show of a young Pakistani girl, I'm going to say, because she went to Pakistan, her hometown, at some point in the show, where she inherits a bangle from her uh, great-grandmother. It's it's not entirely clear to me who she inherited it from. I think it's her great-grandmother, but it could be her grandmother. Either way, she inherits a bangle that gives her powers. What are those powers, you ask? I do not know. They are ill-defined and do not describe them exactly in the show they say that she can tap into some sort of uh between universes there's a veil there's things she can do light stuff she can manipulate light into constructs i would associate the power as closely to the green lantern as i could where she thinks of things and those things appear She's untrained, has no formal training whatsoever, no combat training, no any type of training whatsoever, no gym training, <laughs> nothing. She's just, she can do it all, folks. She doesn't need no training. She's strong, powerful, wham. And, uh, the show itself, I think, is... Um, so I guess eventually she wants to discover where her powers came from, from the bangle. I don't know if they come from her or the bangle. Like, if she gave the bangle to somebody else, does she, do they have powers? unclear in her final costume not particularly shown that she's even wearing a bangle i will say i prefer star girl at this point but we're still sticking with the marvel show i think it's the first couple episodes were pretty well directed kind of interesting take there was some animation a unique directing style which they seem to have forgotten episodes three four and five and then remembered that in episode six oh yeah we do this this like funky style of directing and and like juxtaposition of uh animation and her ideas and things like you know she's really a creative mind all of that goes out the window there are so many things that they set up that did not pay off in this show i cannot even begin to list them other than bruno her uh love interest is set up or her her friend who may be a love interest is set up to have some sort of like super genius powers doesn't pay off there's no point where he exercises his super genius powers uh she has a love triangle between three boys does that pay off does not pay off not at all nothing actually happens there does she have any particular character growth not gonna say that she does she becomes a spectator in her own show by episode five because the main story forgets that she's even in it 
Now, what will I say about the actors? The lead actress, I actually think, is pretty good. Uh, her name is uh, Amon Vellani. I actually liked her. I thought she was charming, and the show was better with her in it. Funny enough, you look at the top billing, there's a bunch of people who weren't even like the top actors in the show. I liked her family. Uh, Mohan Kapoor was pretty good. Yusuf Khan, I thought that was a, he was a pretty, like, he was good. Uh, her brother was kind of funny. The only problem is if you think about most superheroes and Marvel superheroes in general, most of them are loners, and there's a reason for that. The reason why they're loners is because being a superhero is a jeopardy to your family because you make enemies, and those enemies come after your family. So as she goes through the show towards the finale where she has random powers, which are different from the comic book powers. Her comic book powers, she's kind of like Mr. Fantastic. She has in beginning powers. She can make her body change shapes and stuff. But they did a little bit of that, but mostly with this like crystalline structure that she like mentally projects. At one point, the there's a crowd of people cheering for her and her entire family runs up to her and is like, you're the bestest. Well, now all of those people should be arrested by uh, damage control. Mm-hmm. Because they all know who the identity of Miss Nightlight is. It, 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 you know, logically, the show, it just struggles. It really was not a great coherent story. I, did, I didn't mind the first couple episodes. Uh, there was no point to them. There's no, protag- there's no antagonist. I couldn't tell you who the antagonist was. Apparently, there's something to do with Jin, which I guess are, are evil genies. Big spoiler here. Not only is she a genie, she's also a mutant. So let's go Professor X, even though we already had him in in, in uh, Doctor Strange. But she is a mutant. Super exciting. The mo- the least exciting thing that happened was the end post credit scene, where for no reason whatsoever, Carol Danvers, Brie Larson shows up for no reason, just does. Switches places with her. Who cared? You know what? Who cares? I do appreciate. I hope this girl, Amani, uh, Amon Vellani, does good. I think she's a good actress. I hope she has more going forward for her. But this script kind of failed her. She spends all this time at the end trying to protect one of the djinn. So essentially, there's a sort of a plot where the djinn want to pierce the veil between two universes. That plot ends and is completely forgotten about by the sixth episode that plot is no longer existent so existed for about three episodes uh the boy that she likes is one of these uh jinn people his name is kamran and he ends up getting powers his powers he literally is trying to kill damage control officers the damage control and she keeps stopping him from killing damage control officers after she tries to kiss him and the damage control officers aren't even using lethal tactics they're they're using non-lethal tactics but for some reason then at some point they give up non-lethal tactics and start shooting at them like it just it doesn't make a ton of sense maybe the show's not for me i did kind of enjoy the music i thought like stylistically it's directed competently uh, clearly, these directors have a little bit of talent there. I thought there was a unique style to it, but the writers completely let the show down. I have no idea. Like These are some of the worst antagonists I've ever seen in a Marvel show. I couldn't tell you any of their names. I couldn't tell you what they were doing or why. Apparently, damage control is bad, even though all they're trying to do is keep these super-powered teens from destroying the city. That's literally what they say. So my overall rating, I have no idea what to rate this. Apparently Rotten Tomatoes has it at 98% for the critic score. Apparently there were complaints of it being review bombed. Audience score has it 81%. Maybe I'm not the audience for this. I'm pretty sure I'm a Marvel fan, so I'm supposed to be uh, into this. They lightly touch on some interesting geopolitics. They talk about India and how India in 1947 was separated by a partition. Uh, between India and Pakistan. These are things that are cool and interesting. 
But there's a part where the mom, her, you know, Miss Marvel's mom is talking about how hard it was to move to New York and how difficult it was to be, you know, poor and have to work hard. Yet when they fly to Pakistan, the mom used to live in a freaking mansion. I am fairly sure that there's some sort of, you know, the, the, the way that I would think of this show is that the writers and directors of the show were like, ooh, can we get Marvel to pay for a free trip to Pakistan where we get to stay in like fancy hotels and live in the nicest parts of Pakistan? I'm all in. I mean, I would do it myself if I could. I would absolutely do that. So my rating on this, is, I do not recommend it. I do not think you would be interested in it. Maybe if you're a 13 year old girl, you might like it. Even then, I'm not sure that you would like it. It's the CGI is not that great. And here's some of the reviews. Miss Marvel doesn't reinvent the superhero hero wheel. Instead, it dips it in gold and bedazzles it with eye melting visuals. The visuals are not that good. Miss Marvel feels like the first Disney Plus show to really focus on an origin part of the origin story and get it right. The girl has an interesting origin. She's very distracted but very creative. You would think they would tie the creativity part of her mind into the fact that she has the ability to create these constructs. Yet all she ever does is make shields and walk on the light platform. She doesn't create anything interesting. There's not one time that anything is interesting. The girl's literally like this brilliant uh, person able to draw and do all sorts of fantastic things. They don't work. They, they don't study it. They don't go. Uh, deepening this tale about a teen desperate to follow her heart, a story that's hardly unique, is how wonderfully culturally specific Miss Marvel proves. It was a three-way love triangle which never gets resolved. The girl gets nothing. Here's a, an interesting review. If you're a 13 year old girl, this might be a good series for you. The bad guys are about as scary as Joe Pesci in Home Alone and about the same level of sophistication. Oh, that's right. The last episode is a Home Alone episode. I hope you enjoy it. Literally, she time travels for no reason. She falls into the grandfather pop paradox where she's her own grandmother. Her grandmother would be, wouldn't she wouldn't exist if she didn't travel back in time. Why? That part didn't even make sense. It wasn't even relevant to the story. I, I just, I don't get it. Here's an interesting review where it's, uh, the show was whelming. Origin story for Miss Marvel told in a convoluted way. Forced love triangle, pointless, po pointless time shenanigans. People that turn villains at the drop of a hat. There's literally no reason for the boy that she likes to turn into a villain. It's just, it makes no sense. So I do not recommend it. I'm not going to rant about it because it's not as... I don't know the subject as well, so I can't be as disappointed in it as I would be in, like, The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Two characters that I've learned to, like, really enjoy over 10 years or so with the Marvel Universe. It's a brand new character. Very little expectations. What I got, great lead actress, very charming, but otherwise, like... You can't, she doesn't even train. I don't know how she could take on anybody. The poor girl is going to get her and herself killed in real life. So if you like what we do here, please like and subscribe. What did you think? Did you watch it? Am I the only insane person? Who actually, I bet you I'm the only person who watched it. I bet you none of you watched it. Tell me in the chat below in the comments. You didn't watch it. Be like, well, I didn't waste my time, Z, but maybe you ranting about it was a little bit more interesting than the actual show. I was trying not to rant. I was trying to be generous with this one, trying to be kind because I like the lead actress and I like some of the other actors and I thought the family dynamic was cool. But, man, there was just no plot in this, and it did not connect for me. Catch our full-length audio podcast, Stitcher, Spotify, iTunes, all those great places and more. We do live stream it on YouTube. You can catch that 7.30 p.m. Friday night, Eastern Standard Time. But for me, I guess I am on to the next one. Ah.